Algebra 1 Common Core, the June 2016 Regions Exam. Uh, this is the fourth video in the series, starting at number 17. A student invests 500. Now, the sooner you start to see things like invests, right away I'm thinking exponential, uh, because a lot of times our exponential problems are financial questions like this. So invest 500 for three years into a savings account that earns 4% interest. And right away, when you see that percentage symbol, you need to be thinking exponential. No further deposit withdrawals are made during this time. Which statement does not? That's huge. They love these, which of the following is false, or which is not true, or which is incorrect. So which of the following statements does not yield the correct balance in the account at the end of three years? So in general, the way an exponential formula works is we have a pretty standard you know, formula for it. Um, the amount equals the principal times one. Now, for growth, we do plus. If it was, you know, an exponential decay question, it'd be one minus. But we know that we are um, earning interest, you know, and that's typically how savings accounts works, that the money goes up. Otherwise, people wouldn't really open them. Uh, so one plus the percentage raised to the t. Now, what you have to be careful with, the part that people mess up the most is this r value right here. The p is the initial uh, or principal, and that's what we're starting with. So we invest 500, we see that all of these start with 500. Then the 1 plus r, so the r is the trick. This 4%, you can't just do 1 plus 4. So 500 times 1 plus. 4% is not the same thing as 4. 4%, the way percentages work is percentages are out of 100. So 4% really means 4 over 100, 4 out of 100. Right? If you get 4%, you know, on your next test, that means you got 4 out of 100. That's not a very good grade. Uh, so you need to figure out what that decimal is. And it works out that 4 out of 100 is 0 0.04. And you could calculate that in your calculator if you want. You know, 4 divided by 100. Uh, some of you may know the decimal trick of just kind of moving the decimal place to the left 2.2 times. But uh, 0 0.04 is 4 out of 100. Uh, remember, that's a tenth hundredth spot when you're rounding. So 4 out of 100 is 4 hundredths. And if you type in 4 divided by 100 in your calculator, you'll get that. So this will simplify out to be 500 times 1.04 to the t. And t, in this case, for three years, is time. So that's why this is definitely a, a correct answer. And I would be tempted to choose that if it wasn't a not question. And anytime it is a true or false question, make sure you check the other choices because that would be a common mistake because people might think, all right, that's the right answer, circle in and move on. But if you continue down the line, you may realize, wait, I have another answer that looks right. And then you realize I'm actually looking for something that's wrong. Um, now notice that we did one plus something. So this one minus right there, that tells me this is probably my wrong answer, my false answer. But let me check the other choices again. You want to always check them all. Now, why is this true? This is a true statement here. And the issue is, remember, we have 1.04 to the third. Well, an exponent of three means times itself three times. So that's 1.04, which comes from one plus one to three times, raised to the third, same thing. This is probably the trap answer here. The reason why this is where this is basically doing it the long way. You know, how do you get 4%? Well, we start off with 500, and then I get 4% of that. Right, the way you do 4% is 4% times an amount. So this is the amount I get after one year, which is where the 520 comes from. And then I do 4% of that. And that's where this comes from. And then I do 4% of that. So you could kind of, what is it after one year? Raise it by 4%. And then raise that, that value, that next value by 4%. And then raise that next value by 4%. And so this all works out to be true. The minus here is really hopefully the thing that you recognize as to why it's false. Number 18, the line represented by the equation 4y plus 2x equals 33.6 shares a solution point to the line represented in this table below. What is that solution point? This is a rough question, I'll be honest with you. Um, a couple of things. First of all, we want to put this in standard form. And I'm going to use my calculator for systems questions like this. But I want to get this in standard form. First thing is move the 2x to the other side. So 4y equals negative 2x plus 33.6. And then I'm going to divide by 4. 
to get y alone, right? I'm minus 2x to move it to the other side. That's why it's negative over there. And what does this come out to be? y equals negative 1 half x plus whatever this 33.6 is divided by 4. Now, I'm going to use a calculator for this. Let's see, 33, turn it on, 33.6 divided by 4 is 8.4. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. So plus 8.4. All right, so that's not too bad, but I do need to figure out an equation for this. And uh, it's obviously not an easy pattern here, but they do tell you that it's a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the formula we have that helps me get the equation of a line. That's the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals the slope parentheses X minus X1. Uh, but this is, again, this is going to be kind of a mess because I have to do the slope formula to get the slope, and then I got to do this equation, um, and I got a lot of decimals here, which is going to be a pain. So first of all, the m, that's your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We got to figure that out first. Uh, so the slope here, and you can pick any two points. I'm going to go with these positive points, small numbers, positive numbers, should be the easiest to work with. So first, subtract the y values. That's 5 minus 4.6 over 4 minus 2, subtract the x values. This comes out to be 0.4 over 2. Um, and I can figure out what is 0.4 divided by 2. You might not need a calculator for that, but I'll show it to you. 0.4 divided by 2 is 0.2. And let me get that other screen. Sorry, I can't have them both up at the same time with this program here. So, all right, now let me do the point slope form. I'm going to use this point four five. So, y minus the y value I'm using. So, y minus the y value there. M is that slope we got, which we found out to be 0.2 times x minus the x value, since I'm using the point four five, is 4. Simplify this out a little bit. Uh, y minus 5 equals 0.2 times x is 0.2x, and 0.2 times negative 4 is going to be negative, let's say probably 0.8, but I want to make sure I have all this right. So times negative 4 is negative 0.8. Look on. So negative 0.8. Eight, switch colors for me. Uh, and then I have to add five, add five. So this equation is going to come out to be y equals 0.2x plus, now negative 0.8 plus five will be plus 4.2. All right, negative 0.8 plus five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to type these things in and find out where they cross. And again, this, like I said, this is a mess of a question. So first one is 0.2x plus 4.2. So let me type that in. So y equals, let me clear out any old questions I have in there. 0.2x plus 4.2. And then the other one, I gotta check that other line. That's uh, negative half x plus 8.4. So negative, oops, sorry about that. Come on, negative half x plus 8.4. I just want to double check that. Negative half x plus 8.4. OK. And let me take a look at their graphs. So here's the 0.2x one. Here's the negative 0.8. And I want to know where they cross. Now, I could kind of approximate that, but we have a tool on our calculator that'll do it for us. If we hit second, trace, which brings us to calculate. I want to know where things intersect, so I choose number five and move this guy over here. I call him Toodles because he reminds me of the guy from the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So move Toodles over and right where they cross, as close as you could get it, right about there. And hit enter once, enter twice, enter three times, and it'll tell me six, 5.4. So the answer is x value of six, y value of 5.4, which is choice D.
like I said, that is a rough question. Um, you know, definitely, I think the hardest question we've seen so far on this part one. Um, very challenging. A lot, lot, lot going on there. Let's try to get one more in here, maybe. Uh, so number 19. And you see this towards the end of the multiple choice. They do tend to go kind of easy to hard with some exceptions, but the last, you know, four, five, or six questions of the multiple choice are, it can be very challenging. So what is the solution of the equation here? Um, a couple of things we could do, and we could definitely use our calculator for some of this, but uh, first thing, I want to just kind of get this into a normal looking standard form. So first of all, this x plus 2 squared, might as well write the whole thing out, but this piece right here, that is x plus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, and I could multiply this whole thing out, um, you know, FOIL if you want to call it that, x times x, again, let me forget about that 2 for a second, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, two, 2 times x is 2x, two, 2 times 2 is 4. And then I could distribute this 2 in, combine these like, these are going to be 4x in here, distribute this 2, so 2x two squared plus, it was 4x, and now I'm distributing a 2 to be 8x, 2 times this 4 is 8, and minus 4 equals 28. And then I can, you know, combine these. These will combine to be 4. And I can minus this 28 over. So set equal to 0, it's going to be 2x squared plus 8x minus 24 equals 0. And I can factor this. Um, I do recognize that there's a GCF. Divide everything here by 2. So that'll leave you with x squared plus... 4x minus 12 equals 0, and that can be factored. x plus 6x minus 2 equals 0. Those are the numbers that multiply to this and add to this. And forget about that, but I could solve these. And I think you recognize the pattern that factors turn into solutions. We see kind of an opposite sign there. So I end up with negative 6 and positive 2. But let me show you maybe an easier way to do this question. Is what if I just... Keep it as is here, but set it equal to zero. So keep the, here, let me do that maybe over here. So keep the two parentheses, x plus two squared, and just minus the 28 right away. So minus 28 onto that negative four. It's gonna be negative 32 equals zero. And now that it's set equal to zero, this is what we'd call vertex form. You know, my vertex is gonna be negative two, negative 32. Uh, but what I could do is I could type this into my y equals and find the solutions from my calculator. If it's set equal to zero, you could think of it as equal to y. So two, so let me go back to my calculator mode here. Clear that, clear that. Two parentheses, x plus two squared minus 32. And I can see that it's going to be crossing at negative 6 and positive 2. But I could also look at my table and see that x to positive 2 and negative 6, we have zeros. So those are the solutions. You know, solutions is another term for zeros or roots or x-intercepts. So you could have kind of worked the whole thing out algebraically and got it down to something where you could factor and solve. Or because you know your calculator could do that work for you, you could let the calculator do that work. All right, uh, we're getting up to about 14 minutes, so I'm going to stop this video at 19 and pick up the next one at 20. See ya.